everyone. A big welcome back to the G2Z online event series. Thank you very much for joining us and thanks to those of you in the future watching the recording. In the spirit of reconciliation, we acknowledge the traditional custodians of country throughout Australia and their connections to land, sea and community. We pay our respects to the elders past and present and extend that respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders. I'm lucky enough to be speaking to you today from Tungurung country. Let us know in the chat which land you're on today. My name's Nell Thompson and I'm the coordinator of the National Getting to Zero or as we call it G2Z program. I'll be hosting the webinar for you today. And G2Z was developed by the Animal Welfare League of Queensland and they continue to support it to this day. G2Z offers its consulting support and educational services at no charge to local governments and not-for-profits across Australia. Our focus continues to be on companion animal welfare and management issues such as strategy, legislation, operations, programs and community engagement, working towards reducing intake to pounds and shelters and keeping pets in their homes. We invite people to take a look at our website at g2z.org.au Sign up for our regular e-news, connect with us via social media and to get in contact with us to see if we can help or have a chat about the issues that you're facing in your community or organisation. So what's happening today? Once I hand over to our presenter, there'll be around 40 minutes of presentation and then time for questions once the presentation is concluded. The recording of this webinar will be accessible via our website to everyone to watch at any time. We're going to ask that everyone mutes themselves during the presentation, unless our presenter indicates otherwise. If you have questions, you can start putting them in the Q&A section and we'll get through as many as we can at the end of the session. If you have very quick questions that relate to your understanding of the content, put your hand up and we'll try and get to them during the presentation. There is a button at the bottom of your screen where you can pop your hand up. As always, please excuse any working from home background noises that may filter through. And I am delighted to introduce Melanie Cooper to you today. Melanie is the first speaker we've had on this series from an ecology slash environmental background, and I hope she's the first of many. Melanie is a part-time local land care coordinator for Wedden Land Care based in Grenfell, Central West, New South Wales. With a Bachelor of Applied Science, Melanie has been working in the natural resource management realm with rural communities for over 20 years through a variety of technical and community-based roles in both the public and the private sector. She's also a farmer managing a 4,000 hectare mixed farming property with her husband while being a mum to two little girls. Melanie has been working with Wet and Land Care for the last four years and is passionate about working with rural communities, schools and farmers at grassroots level to restore ecosystem function and biodiversity and improve the health of our natural assets and agricultural products. So over to you, Melanie. Thank you, Nell, and thank you everyone for having me uh, for this webinar today. Uh, it's really exciting to be able to extend uh, what we've done with our program other areas um, and invite other people to, to look at doing something similar in their areas. Um, I can't actually see anybody else on the screen. So um, yeah, just maybe pop any questions up in the chat if you can, um, would be great. And we'll see how we go. Um, yeah, so I'll just move through my presentation and yeah, we'll take some questions um, towards the end if you like. Um, and here we go. So hopefully everyone can see the screen there. Okay. So I'm here today on behalf of a project called the Keeping Cats Safe at Home Project. Uh, it's a collaborative cat management program and I'm here on behalf of our Project partners, Wedden Landcare, who I work for, our local government, uh, Wedden Shire Council, RSPCA in New South Wales, and the program was funded through the New South Wales government uh, through its environmental trust. So I'm here on behalf of all those project partners and speaking on behalf of them today. So just a little bit of background uh, on Wedden Landcare. I don't know many people know 
about Landcare, but Landcare in our area is a not-for-profit community-driven organisation. Uh, we have a very small um, steering committee of about 24 members um, who sort of guide our activities. Uh, we employ two coordinators, myself and, and another lady, uh, who I'm part-time, and we work um, to, I guess, enhance our local environment, um, work with the rural community, um, both the ur urban community in our smaller towns and our farming community um, to improve our natural resources, our natural resource assets, um, so, and with a particular focus on regenerative agriculture and biodiversity. So I guess we came into this, this project um, from an, an environmental perspective. Um, but it certainly opened our eyes up to a whole heap of other issues and, and management issues in terms of domestic animals and things like that. Um, yeah, so it's been really uh, an educational project for us as well. So um, a bit more background on the Weddenshire and, and where this project is located. Um, the Wedden Shire is, is a rural, small rural community. Uh, the total shire has a population of around 3,600 people. Uh, we have one main town, which is Grenfell. Um, there's about 2,500 of those people live in the town of Grenfell. And then we have just a few other um, outlying villages with smaller numbers, obviously. And this is uh, amongst a, a rural farming agricultural community, uh, mixed farming, so crops and also a lot of grazing with sheep and cattle. Uh, we do have some large areas of remnant bushland around our shire, um, particularly the Wedden Mountains National Park and Canimbala National Park. And between these are really important fragments of endangered ecological communities, which is um, so a vegetation community that um, has been so heavily cleared in the past that you know only small fragments remain and are at threat of extinction basically. So um, where we're based, uh, the soils are really quite fertile and healthy soils um, supporting those agricultural systems, I guess, which means unfortunately that in the past a lot of the area was cleared for agriculture. Uh, so only tiny bits remain, um, particularly of our box gum grassy woodlands, our grey box woodlands and our mo weeping mile woodlands. Um, they're the three main um, endangered communities that we get in our area. Um, we also, uh, our area is located within what's known as a key biodiversity area, and this is an international recognition. Uh, we're in the Southwest Slopes key biodiversity area. And people like Birding New South Wales, which is birding, a statewide bird watching group, um, have targeted our particular town for um, to do surveys and the like um, because of the diversity in the species that we get here. We're in a little bit of a transitional zone between the semi-arid woodlands to the east, uh, sorry, to the west and to the sclerophyll forests to the east. Uh, and just be, we're on sort of the, the right of the cusp of that of that transition zone. So we get you know on the on the western range of a lot of species and the eastern range of a lot of species, which means we get that little bit of overlap, creating this unique diversity in the animal and and both the flora and fauna species that we get here. So um, a bit of a biodiversity hotspot we're in, which we're, we're really lucky. Um, the natural um, environment is one of our shire's greatest assets. So. Um, from a land care perspective, we're really looking to preserve that uh, and came into this project knowing that cats in particular um, do predate on a lot of our smaller woodland birds and reptiles and things like that. Uh, so came in it from more of the cat management perspective from that side of things, um, which is, yeah, which is, as you'll see, has been a really good addition to the project, um, aside from all the, the domestic issues and um, just keeping cats healthy and reducing numbers and, and things like that. So, um, yeah, this is the Wedden Shire. It's, as you can see there, there are areas of um, of these large remnant bushland areas, the Wedden Mountains and Canimbala National Park and some smaller state forests in between. And in amongst that is a lot of scattered woodland.
Um, this is where we're situated uh, within New South Wales here. As you can see, we're sort of right on the edge of that transitional zone. Uh, as we head further west, it gets drier and, and more arid. So, um, right on the edge there. In terms of cat management in our shire, um, we have a small local government area and um, basically to, do, to for the project, we hadn't really done anything uh, in terms of strategic cat management. Uh, we had a policy for keeping of animals, um, but that was basically aligned with the requirements under the Companion Animals Act. So nothing above and beyond what you know was required. There was... Uh, according to our ranger, uh, we only have one ranger for our entire shire, so um, she's a very busy woman. We have a, um, prior to the project, we had a pretty high level of non-compliance, even with that um, that policy for uh, keeping of animals, um, which relates to things like the number of cats that you can keep and you know, the fact that you need to get your cat desexed and microchipped and registered, if it's, you know, particularly if it's not for breeding. Um, so, yeah, but uh, her estimation was that only around 10% of the domestic cats um, that were out there ha had actually been registered. And, you know, compared to things like dogs, the number of cat registrations per year, I think she was getting something like 150 dog registrations and only two cat registrations Um which indicates, you know, we know that there's more cats than that out there. So just a yeah, high level of non-compliance or, you know, people just not being aware of the need to register their cats and things like that. And I guess without um, state legislation in place to enforce a lot of local policies, uh, our council kind of balked at a lot of the cat management strategies that some other councils and particularly around the ACT have taken on um, because they didn't have the legislation there to back it up or enforce them and, and deemed it a little bit futile, I guess, to um, go and create new policies on top of what we already had uh, if there just simply wasn't legislation there to back it up. So and that's been a an issue across the state, really, um, which our ranger, every ranger conference she goes to, the main topic is trying to get more legislation around around cats. So, you know, so at least they're on par with dogs. Um, there was sort of anecdotal evidence, I guess, of growing concerns from the community, uh, even as land care. Uh, we would often get people coming in the door to see, you know, what, what they can do about all these feral cats and uh, all these cats that are roaming and getting into people's backyards and killing birds. So there was an increase in cat sightings by our ranger and also cat hotspots developing. Uh, some of our rural villages with their rural tips uh, had, you know, huge populations of, of feral cats that were seen. So, yeah, in terms of cat management um, from a, as, a, as a feral cat um, issue. Um, it's kind of always been put a little bit into the too hard basket, I guess. Um, you know, very difficult to control cats, uh, very difficult to to manage feral numbers. They're, they're a very fly creature, as we all know, um, and, and just, just difficult to manage in that way. So cat management in our shire um, was basically yeah, put into the, the too hard basket. Then enter the Keeping Cats Save at Home project, I guess. Uh, so this project uh, was initiated by RSPCA in New South Wales, who applied for some funding through the New South Wales Government's Environmental Trust. Uh, they then put a, an expression of interest out to local governments, local councils, and thankfully, one of our councillors is actually a member of our local land care group, and he picked up on it uh, and thought it might be a really good opportunity because we had just had some recent issues with, with cat complaints and, and what can we do about these cats. So we picked up on it and talked to our local council. Um, I then worked with our local ranger to submit an expression of interest to the program. Um, it was a really... Good process actually pretty straightforward and 
Yeah, so we put our expression of interest in in March 2021, and we were notified in April 2021, so a month later, that we were successful. So, and that was that was really good. So we were one of 10 councils across New South Wales to be successful for the program. And one of the really good things about the program was that it it targeted, it wanted to look at councils that were at different stages of cap management. So councils that were a little bit further advanced and putting some pretty high level strategies in place, um, you know, where they had things like curfews and all those sorts of things in place. So councils that were further down the track than, than others, but also councils that were just starting out in cap, man cap management. And um, I guess that's where we're in Shire sat. Um, we hadn't really done anything in the past. So we were one of those, those councils that they were keen to look at because we hadn't really done much. And being a rural council as well, they wanted to look at a, a range of different councils across state um, both on the coast in the cities and, and the rural areas as well so we were one of 10 to be successful um, which was really good uh, so the keeping cap at home project um, is a four-year behavioral change project um, so it's aimed at humans but you know resulting in some some really be good benefits for the cats as well uh, it's aimed to reduce the impacts of pet cats on our native wildlife but also improve domestic cats' health and safety by encouraging that responsible cat ownership. So twofold, and the project did tend to, to focus on, you know, why it's important to keep cats um, in the house or in on the property um, for their own benefit, for the cat's health and safety, but has the, had all these flow-on effects to then obviously reducing uh, the impacts on our native wildlife. So a really good, um, unique combination there, I think. So the project, uh, once we had, um, had got the funding, um, there was sort of four phases to the project. The first phase uh, in 2021 was a community consultation and, and stakeholder consultation process where they looked at surveying and interviewing a whole swag of the community to find out where the where we were at basically and then use that to design a project for our local government area so each of the 10 councils went through the same process and each had a different sort of outcome in terms of the project design and what rolled out in their area um, so that was a really good aspect of the project was that it was sort of customized to each each local government area um, so throughout the, the program from the very get-go there was a marketing and communication strategy that was put in place. Um, so that rolled out throughout the program. Um, then we sort of entered phase two in 2022, um, where they had an official project launch and began um, the individual programs for each local government area. In our area in particular, it was a desexing program uh, for cats. So we started that and then phase three led into some educational programs and more community events, getting information out there and um, the development of some resources to, to back up uh, the project. And then we were lucky enough in our area because we did so well in these uh, in phase two and three um, to get sort of a phase four where we offered further incentives. So we'll just go through uh, these different phases, I guess, and, and what happened during them. So the first phase there was a community consultation phase. So a, a survey was developed and distributed to the broader community. It basically looked at um, trying to ascertain what people's attitudes towards cats were and, you know, towards cat management in the Shire. So whether they were cat lovers or cat haters or indifferent um, and how they felt about, you know, having some stronger policies in place for cat management and things like that. We had around 300 responses, um, which was pretty good for our show, considering it was only a bit over 3,000 people. Um, so that was a, a good response rate for our shire. And the results from that um, were analysed by a behavioural 
change expert, uh, Dr. Lynette McLeod. So all this side of the project was handled by RFPCA New South Wales. They did all this part of it. Um, there was also stakeholder consultation. So this is where we had a little bit of input to the project to identify some of the key stakeholders within our local government area. Um, so the ranger and I helped to develop a bit of a list there and it included people like the council, obviously, local members, um, National Parks and Wildlife Service, WIRES, um, the Wildlife um, Information and Rescue Service, um, local land services, Forestry Corp, the state forest, our local family clinics, um, all our little village progress groups and um, other, you know, avenues for community connection, I guess, or schools and also some of those individual activists, particularly those people who had been coming to us with complaints from time to time. So the survey was completed in um, mid-2021 and the results were sort of there by the, towards the end of the year, um, which, yeah, showed that our Shire, um, there was a lot of cat owners, um, but didn't really have a lot of, you know, knowledge of policies and requirements around cat management. Um, it was sort of 50-50, people for and against, you know, further restrictions. Um, but, yeah, there was certainly also a lot of people who, who wanted to see some cat management strategies put into place. Uh, RSPCA in New South Wales also developed a website during this time, and that was kind of just a central point to 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 put people point people towards. Um, so it's yeah, RSPCA in New South Wales slash keeping cats safe. Home. Um, yeah, it basically had a lot of inf it does have a lot of information on the project. Um, yeah, about what the project is aiming to do and the, the partners involved. Um, they created a lot of awareness videos that are up there and resources for the general public and also cat owners. So for the general public, there's a lot of information on things like, you know, what do I do if I find a cat or a stray cat or, you know, find a litter of, of kittens, you know, what should I do with them? And then more specific information for cat owners as to how they can transition their cat to be more of an indoors cat, um, you know, different enrichment activities they can do to keep their cat happy in the home. And, yeah, um, also things like harness training their cat, um, all sorts of different things. So ideas to sort of encourage people to move their cat indoors and how to go about that um, so that it's more of a successful experience than a failure. So uh, there's also resources there for different educators and parents, lots of activities for children and that sort of thing. So um, a really, yeah, good work website, um, very helpful information on there um, and just, yeah, lots of project updates as well as to the outcomes of the project to date and, and how it's tracking. Uh, there was, yeah, a huge social media campaigns. So they ran at least um, six social media campaigns and these were rolled out by, they were developed by RSPCA New South Wales and rolled out across all the different LGAs involved. So with Wedden Landcare and the Weddenshire Council, our role was to basically get these social media campaigns out there. Uh, we had a, a long live the cat campaign, kitten season, several kitten season campaigns across the years, uh, different competitions uh, for particularly things like cat nets, uh, for cat enclosures, um, for people's backyards and um, cat enrichment toys and things like that. They Another campaign called It's Getting Cold Outside, so looking at, you know, the best time to transition your cat to the house. Uh, one around International Cat Day, and also lots of education and awareness videos. So talking to cat owners and how they've gone about um, or how, what they do to keep their happy cat happy inside the house. Um, a lot of resources there as well. A lot of these are up on the website. So, yeah, as I said, fact sheets, brochures, just trying to get lots of information out there and um, we often utilise a lot of these. We have a lot of other field days for a lot of other events. So no matter what field day it was, it's 
there's always some sort of relation to biodiversity and 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 this thing. So um, these would always be on the table, I guess. Uh, all these brochures really there to hand out. Um, educational packs for schools and a lot of kids' activities. So just trying to engage different sectors of the community, I guess, in this project and um, provide information um, that's easy to access. There were several events held throughout the project. Um, so obviously the first one there was the official launch of the project um, with RSPCA New South Wales down in Sydney. And that was a really good opportunity for the 10 different councils to come together uh, with RSPCA New South Wales. Um, our local councillor went down to that. Just a good opportunity to see what everybody else is up to in their areas, um, how they're dealing with things and um, yeah, how the project was rolling out in their areas and different strategies that they've got in place. So at, at different points throughout the project, we had sort of um, whole project um, catch-ups on Zoom just to see, you know, get ideas from other councils as to what sort of sorts of things they were rolling out and um, just hear what everyone was up to and, and how it was all happening. So that was really good. As I said, we had a lot of local events where we promoted the project and the, the outcomes of the project and, and what we were hoping to achieve. Uh, and RSPCA New South Wales also came down just recently this year to our main, uh, one of our main tourism events, the Henry Lawson Festival in Grantfall, uh, where they held a stall and um, promoted the project and talked to local people about um, their cats and even did, I think, visited up to 10 people who, from that store, um, 10 local people, um, to see what they were doing with their cats in their backyard, basically, and get some, you know, video footage and, and things like that and interviews. So um, some really good events there. So... One of the main aspects of our project uh, in the Western Shire was our desexing program. So from our community consultation and all that sort of thing, it was deemed that um, one of the best um, ways we could go was to implement a desexing program. So we offered free desexing and microchipping of cats within the Western Shire. And this commenced in April 2022. We part, we don't have a local veterinary clinic in Brentful. Um, we're so small, we don't have one. But nearby in Forbes, um, Lachlan Valley Vets operates from there and they do travel to Grantful one day a week, operating out of a, a small um, subclinic, I guess, uh, here. So we partnered with them and were able to secure them for an extra day um, a week to run desexing clinics. So, oh, sorry, an extra day a month uh, for the desexing clinics, and um, which was really good of them. So I guess they came in as, as another partner to the project in a sense. And our ranger, Alison, played a big role in drumming up interest for this program, talking to existing, you know, I guess, clients that she knew of um, who, who handled a lot of cats, uh, those that were, were struggling, we have a sort of a lower socioeconomic um, class here. So, yeah, talking to a lot of those people and offering assistance with transportation of cats to the desexing clinics just to get it over the line, basically. But the program was very popular, and, and thanks to Alison's work, um, we managed to desex 100 cats in the first four months, which was um, which is an outstanding result for our the size of our shire and as it turned out, an outstanding result for the project. Um, in the same time, some of the larger councils only managed to desex two cats. So it was a massive effort from um, Alison to get those cats to the clinics. Um, so yeah, we, we held so about 20 cats per clinic. Um, so there was five clinics within those four months. And um, yeah, it was a really, really good outcome. Uh, and so from there, the desexing program just continued to roll on basically because it was so popular and it had all these extra benefits. Um, Alison was certainly developing um, much better relationships with these cat owners and, and cat carers. So a lot of the cats weren't necessarily the traditionally owned cats. Um, they were sort of semi-owned cats, particularly in the rural areas, a lot of farmers and things like that. And then the rural villagers tend to take in, you know, the odd mouser or 
um, to stray cat um, and tend to just feed it and not really take further care of it, but just um, have it there. So there was a lot of these semi-owned cats um, that came through the program as well. Uh, and Alison, yeah, in the past, you know, was would, would turn up to people's doorstep and would be quickly turned away. But by the end of the program, uh, she had really engaged and earned the trust of these people. And um, yeah, was certainly engaging with them at a higher level and that, then provided the opportunity to educate these people about why, you know, it's important they only have a limited number of cats and why it's important to keep desexing and and reducing the numbers and, and that sort of thing and keeping their cats contained where they can. So yeah, the desexing program was great because um a lot of reduction in the number of unwanted litters and, and things like that, but all these added added benefits as well. Uh, we also ran our educational program. So this was in 2023, so last year, um, RSPCA New South Wales came down and we did a bit of a road show across four of our local primary schools. We only have five local primary schools. So there was four were targeted, um, over 100 kids across those schools. And yeah, basically gave, gave a presentation on the importance of killing cats safe at home, what can happen if cats roam and, um, you know, the impacts on wildlife and things like that and how to ensure cats remain healthy and happy at home. So some tips for the kids on how they can look after their kids. Quite an engaging session for the children, lots of hands-on things and, yeah, really well um, targeted towards children. Uh, and it really linked in well with our land care programs. I spend a lot of time in schools uh, and I had just before doing this series of um, presentations had been talking to the children about threatened species you know the impacts of feral animals on wildlife and we'd done a lot of, of projects and around you know what can you do to help our threatened species and biodiversity so it was a really good segue into this um this cat program um, and lots of take-home packs and information for parents. So, yeah, kind of getting that added benefit of being able to target the, target the wider audience via the children, uh, which was really good. Um, because of how successful and how proactive we were in the desexing program and the educational programs, RSPCA in New South Wales then offers, offers additional funding um, through the program uh, to run an incentive, well, whatever we wanted really, but we chose to do an incentive um, for cat enclosures. So we opened, Alison and I worked together to develop up a, an incentive program. Um, obviously there was different eligibility criteria and one of those being that the cats had to be desexed and microchipped. So we opened it up to the residents of the Weddonshire um, and we had, I think we had 34 applications, but only 34, 30 of them were deemed eligible and all we were able to fund all those 30. Uh, so that the participants got um, a cat enclosure and they were in a range of sizes, whether it was portable, medium or large, and they received the cat net enclosure, a shade sail and a hammock. Uh, and Alison conducted some, some follow-up inspections there. So we had an Another project partner come in there, which was basically CatNets, who supply the um, the cat enclosures. They um, did some discounted rates and things like that for us, which was really good. So another aspect to the project. Um, yeah, I'll just, I guess, summarise the, the outcomes overall. So the program is still going. Um, we finish up in um, December this year for this four-year project. Um, this is coming to an end this year. So all up to date, we've desexed 317 cats uh, and microchipped uh, through the program. Um, I guess, yeah, educated over 100 school students through the, the educational program that we did. We did the 30 cat enclosures. Um, but I guess some of the outcomes uh, go beyond those numbers, I guess, and it's more about the really positive relationships that have been built between the project partners. Um, working 
you know, we, we did land care, worked with our local council in the past, but, you know, not on a project such as this and not as, on a, such a close scale. Um, it was really a symbiotic relationship where land care, we had the capacity and the skills to do a lot of the sort of the media and, you know, dissemination of information. We held a lot more field days and had a a bit more extension to to the farming community and things like that and in our rural area and yeah so we'll really be able, able to extend the project in that way um allison you know her role in you know physically getting the cats to the dissecting clinics and talking to the cat owners and you know giving that one-on-one -on -one information and education um was really valuable um, it's been a really positive project for our local council. They were copying a bit of bad black when at the time of the project, and this was, you know, one really good positive thing that they that they could do, um, which was really good. And through Alison's work, it it sort of led into this, you know, in building the relationships with some of these cat owners. Um, she's really developed a really quite a good cat rehoming. Um, program with a couple of the owners so that's been really successful um, our pound intake prior to the project was fairly low um, but yeah this is certainly helping to reduce that even more and um, prevent a, you know hardly any going in through the pound um, which is really good um, according to Alison's figures in terms of the cat related nuisance complaints uh, we've had a 75% reduction in cat-related nuisance complaints uh, in this past year compared to the four-year average prior to the program. So that's a really good result um, in terms of, um, you know, appeasing, you know, a um, bit of angst within the community about, about cats. And, yeah, I really feel that um, it's been a very positive first step for our council and feel that, you know, what we've done over the past few years will really help um, to strengthen um, what we can do going forward. I, I feel more confident now that council could, could perhaps suggest some additional policies and, you know, without too much community backlash because of this, you know, project and what we've been able to, to get out to people. So, um, yeah, I guess it's overall been a very positive experience and. Um, yeah, thank you. I that's pretty much all from the all the project. Um, you can see most of the project uh, partners there. Um, RSPCA, New South Wales, Lachlan Valley, that's Wedenshire Council, Wedden Land Care, and our cat owners, of course. And that was for our hundredth cat being detected early on in the piece. So thank you very much, everybody, for listening. I'll now have a look at the chat and see what we've got there. Um, Thank you so much, Melanie. That was a fantastic overview of clearly a very um, complex uh, and active program. I mean, you guys really made the most of it. Probably, uh, um, I'm not sure how many questions we've got there, but I'm going to jump in and ask, what is next steps for you guys and for the program itself and for the future of the program? Because I know that the funding is limited. Is that correct? Yeah, um, I'll just stop sharing my screen and I might be able to see some more people. Um, yeah, I guess in terms of the program, I know that um, RSPCA New South Wales are certainly working to seek more funding um, to continue on with the program. It's been so successful, but obviously only across 10 LGAs. Mm. Um, and I don't know, perhaps they'll target different LGAs. Um, and look to extend the program to other areas. Um, we're kind of in our shire. We, we, we kind of ran out of, of puff a bit, I guess, with um, the desexing program um, in terms of Alison, the input Alison was having to um, be able to get these cats to the desexing clinic. So if we were to continue on, we would probably choose a slightly different format where, you know, it, it, the owners become more on the cat owner to, to get their cat to the clinic. Um, it was simply done the way we did it because, you know, we wanted to ensure those cats, you know, 
our local vet had put aside a, a specific day to do these clinics and we wanted to make sure they had, you know, a full book of 20 cats to do. Um, so it, it, there was a few complexities because of the size of our of our area and the fact that we don't have a local vet here full time. So just trying to maximise the vet's time, I guess. So we would probably like to continue the desexing program. It has been very successful and has really made an impact on the number of cats out there. So um, it would be great to be able to continue to offer something in some capacity. Um, yeah, I guess moving on for our council, I'd really like to see some discussions happening about, yeah, can we firm up some of our policies? What can we, you know, put out there, you know, to try and and um, encourage cat owners to to really keep their cat, you know, contained to their property, um, yeah, and to ensure that you know people take it on upon themselves to continue to desex and microchip and register their their animals. So, um, yeah, I'd like to see some some further policy development at a local level. Um, yeah, I feel as I said that we've now got a few runs on the board within the community to be able to do that. Um, yeah, but I know that RSPCA New South Wales are keen to continue the program and are seeking, looking to seek funding. We've done a lot of um, promotional sort of videos in terms of the successes of this current project to to be able to utilise them to, to um, yeah, go in for, for extra funding, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, fantastic. And has it um, changed... I guess the perspective of land care. So the organisation that you work for, uh, has it changed your perspective or the organisation's perspective on um, the cat caretaker dynamic and how to communicate with um, mm -hmm. people who care for cats? And that it, you know, so what what have your learnings been in that yeah, space? I guess it has. Um, I mean, in the past, you know. From a land care perspective, we're probably looking more at the feral population than the domestic population, and we would sort of go in there and be like, "Well, oh, we need to eradicate these cats and you know kill these cats," and you know it was a pretty hard line approach, I guess, and you know not really considering the people out there that are cat lovers. Um, and I think through this project, we've certain certainly seen that if you work with people rather than against people. And you know, take that different approach. Um, you can still get a good outcome, but you know, kind of, you know, and and work with a different sector of the community that you probably we probably wouldn't have. Um, yeah. You know, if you know, there's there's cat lovers out there, and I guess if if we're for biodiversity, you know, we might be seen as as cat haters in a way. Um, but yeah, working understanding that, you know, it's not really the cat's fault <laughs> um, in, you know, targeting for the humans that are responsible mm. um, was a was a good learning. And, um, yeah, just the fact that, you know, looking at alternate ways to get an outcome, I guess, was a, was a good one for this project, um, taking a different approach, looking at it through somebody else's eyes and... Um, yeah, working with people. Um, one of the big things with the project, I know that Alison learnt was often in the with council. Um, you know, they yeah, we sort of had to turn a blind eye, I guess. One of the big questions at the beginning was, um, do we make these people, you know, register their cats? And, you know, if they've got more than two cats, do we, you know, yeah. do we come down on them? But um, the decision was made very early on that we need to kind of turn a blind eye to those people because by working with those people, you know, we were able to, um, you know, rather than coming down hard on them, we, you know, we were able to educate them and we probably got 10 times as many cats through the clinic than we, we would have if we had taken a hard line and told them they had to register their cats and all that we we got the outcome we wanted registration is you know the final step i guess and you know while it's necessary from a legislative legislative point of view uh from an outcome point of view you know we'd already got the outcome by desexing the cat so um yeah 
it was um, just trying to be a little bit more flexible in that way, I guess, um, in terms of, you know, taking more of a softly, softly approach and, um, yeah, working with the people, I guess, yeah. So, yeah. That's so interesting. Um, Gabrielle is asking about whether you looked at offering cat deterrence at any stage, which I think is a fantastic question. Um, so for those people who are not wanting, you know, the neighbour's cat to come in their yard or whatever that might be, um, were cat deterrents ever part of a discussion? Um, no, uh, not in our area. They weren't. Um, I guess it is, a, is, an, is an idea. Mm -hmm. um, but I guess, you know, ultimately the outcome for or the aim of this project was to reduce the number of cats roaming um, and reducing the impact on wildlife. So if there's a deterrent there, yes, it might not come into people's properties, but it's still out there roaming, still at risk of catching diseases, still at risk of getting hit by a car, still at risk of attacking wildlife. Um, yeah, so I guess it, that while deterrence would probably please some of those people in the community not wanting cats in their backyard, um, it's probably still not going to re ultimately reduce the, the problem. Um, and, yeah, particularly from RSPCA's point of view, one of the main things is, you know, the number of cats that, that die or get injured um, when they roam is huge and um yeah i guess ultimately if you can keep your cat in your property it, you know it reduces you know those you know getting lost and impounded it reduces it getting sick or hit by a car or bitten by something attacked you know, by a dog or another cat um yeah so ultimately for the cat's health the best outcome is to contain it within its own property yeah all right, fantastic. Well, if there aren't any more questions, I can't see any more questions there. If, if this is your last chance, everybody. If you've got a question for Melanie, then now is the time. Yeah. She's been very generous with her time for today and it's been a really fantastic presentation to be able to see things from the different perspective of land care and the different collaborations and partnerships. And that's certainly a, a topic that we go on about a lot is collaborating with your community stakeholders and finding community solutions for, for issues. And I think that you guys um, have got some great uh, advice to and experiences to give now to other, you know, other communities. So congratulations, well Thank done. You. And um, yeah. we appreciate your input being from a different sector um we really yeah. appreciate you being involved um and yeah we look forward to seeing more uh of this kind of work being done i can see there's actually one question here from brian uh how yeah. many of the 317 d6 cats were ultimately contained if you know yeah i probably don't know exactly um but yeah, I would certainly not all of them. Um, Brian, yeah, there were, uh, in particular with this project, there was probably at least five households where there was large numbers of cats, uh, particularly in our rural villages where we had tended to have people, you know, taking on, you know, 15 to 20 cats. Um, yeah, so really trying to work with those people. So I know that some of those certainly weren't contained. Um, but some of the, the cat enclosures that we gave out, so there was the 30 and some of those um, properties had multiple cats, so up to three cats um, for some of those. So, um, and then there was others that sort of did their own DIY um, cat enclosures, um, yep. more permanent structures, yep. which is, was really good to see. Some already had them. Um, some already contained their cats yeah. to their house, um, which was really, it was, that was a good learning as well. Like just to know that these things are actually happening in our shire. We we assume that nobody contained their oh. cats to their yeah. house yeah. or their property, but they, yeah, in doing this project, we actually saw that there, there are some responsible cat owners out there. So 
which was really good to see. We did case studies on those as well. So um, that was good. So I would say, yeah, I'd say up to about 100 cats out of those 317 that from a rough guess. Yeah. So, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, um, as Candace says, well done on the successful project. If only we could also change humans' behaviour with building on wildlife territory and mowing them down in cars. <laughs> Agreed. Easy to change our cats' lifestyles than our own. That is yeah. so very true. Um, but, look, thank you so much, everybody, for attending today, and thank you so much again, Melanie, for your time. We hope to stay yep. in touch and um, continue to get updates on what's happening in the Wedden Shire. And uh, we look forward to um, seeing you all for the next session. If you've got suggestions for speakers or topics, please let us know. Um, you're always welcome to put forward suggestions. Keep an eye on our e-news and our social media so that you get uh, announcements on future webinars in this series. So take care, everybody, and we will see you at the next one. Thank you. Thank you.